This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five really cool Python project ideas, which will help you get started with learning Python. Starting with project number one, which is a URL shortener. And this is one of the biggest classics because it requires you to learn how to use APIs and how to make API requests to actually shorten your link. So you can redirect an already existing link to a new link. So this is how it should work. First, you ask the user, what kind of link would they like to shorten? And at this point they can enter some input. So as you can see, I have this huge link which I got from Google and no matter how far I zoom out, it does not get any shorter. So of course I'd like to shorten that so it doesn't scare my friends. So as soon as I enter that, it's going to output a shortened version. Now we can zoom back in so you can see it. And the shortened version is going to be your own custom website or something else. The whole purpose of this is to shorten that link into something that actually makes sense. And preferably, I mean, of course you can keep the endpoint random, but it would also be nice if you could make it customizable. So if this link hypothetically goes to cats, you could just write cats at the end here, and that will make it more explicit for whoever you share this link with. Moving on to project idea number two, image downloaders. And I'm not just talking about an image downloader that you type in a URL and it downloads the image, but I'm talking about taking it a step further because sometimes if you are a creative artist or you just need some pictures or resources for your project, it's going to be very common to go and surf the internet for images that you want to download and do that manually. But in this case, I recommend creating a project that does it automatically for you. For example, here I have a function called download images and all I have to do is enter a subject and how many images I want to scrape from the internet or from an API such as Unsplash or preferably something royalty free because of course you want to use these images in your projects. So as soon as we run this, it's going to tell you whether it was successful or not. Here we downloaded two images of cats and those images should end up in some sort of folder such as this images folder. And if we were to open this, we should get some pictures of cats. And here we have two because that's what we specified. And this is just much more convenient to actually surfing the internet for those images. And you can specify as many images as you want. If you really want to go deep into this project, try to include an option that allows you to specify the dimensions for the images that you are downloading. Moving on to project idea number three. And this one is another personal favorite of mine. And it's nothing other than a file sorter because one of the things I waste most of my time on on my computer is sorting my files. I have a lot of random files all over my computer and obviously they are not sorted according to any system. No matter how many years of programming it has been, I still haven't learned to create a system on my computer. Anyway, going back to the project, here we have a file sorter and right now I created a random folder that contains a lot of random files that I created manually and it also contains an inner folder. So one sample use case of this project is to group all of these files with the extensions. So I'm not grouping them by name, I'm just grouping them based on extension. So let's try organizing this folder with this program. And to do that, I will run the program and I will type in the folder name, which is the path to this folder. And I just called it folder. And as soon as I run that, as you might have noticed, it's organized all of the files based on the extension. So the JPEGs went inside the JPEG folder, the uh, Python files went inside the Py folder, and the text files went into the text folder. Very satisfying. And it recursively did this so that we didn't end up with a bunch of folders. So creating a file sorter is not only a great way to learn about how Python works, but is also an incredibly powerful tool for your own workflow when you're not using Python. I mean, look at this. Now I can use this anywhere on my computer whenever I get messy, which is all the time, and it will organize all of my files by type. Up next, we have project number four, which is my favorite project of all time. Every time I learn a new programming language, 
I always opt in for this project idea. And that is just creating a chatbot that does everything. And you can even call it a personal assistant if you want. I mean, of course we have ChatGPT these days, but trying to recreate that yourself is a great project idea. And you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. You can choose to include AI or you can choose to keep it vanilla. Whatever you do, whatever kind of functionality you include will definitely help you improve your Python skills. For example, here I have a chatbot and I'm instantiating it as Bob. And as soon as I run this, we get a greeting. Hello, I am Bob. How can I help you today? So I can ask something such as, what is the weather like in Paris today? And Bob can respond something such as, the weather in Paris is sunny today with a high of 26 and a low of 14. Or I can ask something such as, what is an apple? Bob will search for the result, and as soon as Bob finds it in some sort of dictionary, Bob will be able to reply that an apple is a round fruit of a tree of the rose family, which typically has thin green or red skin and crisp flesh. And very kindly, it cited the source, something that's incredibly important in our day and age. And then of course, since I'm a kind human being, I'll say thank you. And Bob will just keep on going. He'll say, okay, no problem, happy to help. So with this project, as you can see, there's a lot that you can do with it. You need to learn how to validate input. You need to learn how to process that input. And then you need to learn how to fetch those results based on the input. And one of the toughest challenges with chatbots is not mixing up the input. Because if you do it poorly, it might consider what is and what is to be the same sentence, if those are the only two terms you're searching for, and give you mixed results. So you need to be a bit more clever with how you handle input and how you recognize input. But I personally really enjoy giving it a lot of functionality, such as fetching the weather or fetching some dictionary results. And the best part is sharing this bot with your friends because they always try to break it. They will write things that don't even make sense just to see what happens. And I find that to be very fun. And last but not least, we have the final project, which is just creating a game in Python. And creating games in Python isn't necessary for finding a job, but it does teach you a lot about the mechanics of Python and what you can do with it, because it does require you to do a bit of math so that you can create object collision and so on. And again, it's always fun to share these with your friends, if you have any. But let's go ahead and run this now, because what we should end up is with a game of Pong and the AI is always incredibly difficult to fight. That's something you're going to have to learn as well. And there was a glitch. But yeah, I mean, more or less, you learn how to create a game that you can play with your friends. Maybe it would be more fun if you played this multiplayer. I'm absolutely getting roasted. I cannot talk and play this at the same time. Ah! Yeah. Oh, they did not expect that. And I got points for that. The first real win. Oh, yeah. So sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. It would be nice to pause the game upon uh, restart. Now I'm not even going to try, forget about it. But creating a game in Python is quite satisfying when it actually works. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to consider. Trying to make sure that the AI is not overpowered or too easy is a huge challenge as well. So there's a lot to consider when you're creating a game such as Pong, and that's going to teach you loads. There's a lot you can do with it, make it multiplayer, add some extra objects. Maybe you can have up to three balls going up and down. You can change the graphics. You can do so much with it. And even if it's a game, it will teach you a lot about the Python language. And yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any projects that you really enjoyed making when you were learning Python. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.